بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنة إلى يوم الدين Today I want to discuss with you uh, the pressing issue of the month of Muharram and the day called Ashura So what is actually Muharram? Muharram is the month with which the Muslims begin their lunar that is the Hijri calendar the Hijri calendar which begins from the Hijra of Prophet Muhammad It is commemorating the Hijra, the, the migration of Prophet Muhammad from Mecca to Medina. So uh, Muharram is the first month of this Hijri calendar. And it is one of the four sanctified months uh, about which the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, mentions in the Quran. Uh, and he says uh, the translation of the meaning of the verse from the Quran is uh, that the number of the months according to Allah is 12. In the book of Allah on the day he created the heavens and the earth. Among these 12 months there are four months which are sanctified. So these four months according to the authentic traditions and a hadith and, and narrations uh, from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu are Dhul Qaeda, uh, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram and Rajab. So these are the four months which are sanctified uh, by the Quran and by Allah Azza, Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the commentators of the Quran are unanimous on this point because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his sermon on, uh, uh, on the occasion of his last Hajj, his last pilgrimage, he mentioned that one year consists of 12 months of which four are sanctified months and three of them are in sequence that uh, which are Dhul Qaeda, uh, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram and the fourth is Rajab. So the, this is the statement of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu about these four sanctified months and the specific mention of these four months does not mean that any other month has no sanctity because the month of Ramadan is admittedly and unanimously the most sanctified month of the year. But these four months were specifically termed as sanctified months for the, re for the simple reason that their sanctity was accepted even by the pagans uh, of Mecca, you know, the, the mushrikun, the mushrikeen of Mecca. In fact, every month out of the 12 month is originally uh, equal to the other. And there is no inherent sanctity that may be attributed to one of them in comparison to the other months. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, chooses a particular time for his special blessings, the same acquires sanctity out of his, out of his grace. So uh, we can say that this has in virtue, has increased the virtue, virtue of this month. Thus the sanctity of these four months was recognized right from the days of uh, Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam whom Allah's messenger وسلم, always called as his father Ibrahim uh, since the pagans of Mecca attributed themselves to uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam they observed the sanctity of these four months and despite their frequent tribal battles they held it unlawful to fight in these months so this has been a tradition uh, from from many generations for thousands of years rather uh, you know uh, for for observing these months uh, 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 you know as as sanctified months from the time of ibrahim alayhi salam uh, as Pro allah azawajal mentions in the quran that uh, abraham he was not a jew or a christian but he was a hanifa muslim he, he was the righteous muslim on the right path so they were actually on the sunnah of ibrahim alayhi salam in observing these four months as uh, you know uh, precious and and months which in which thing uh, uh, fighting was haram so in the sharia of our noble prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in in our sharia the sanctity of these months was upheld and the quran referred to them as the sanctified months and muharram has certain other characteristics that are special and unique only to it which are fasting for example fasting during the month of muharram 
as the as the noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has mentioned that the best fast the best fast after the fasts of Ramadan are those of the month of Muharram so the best days that you you would fast if you would you were to fast outside Ramadan the best days that you would fast would be the fast of Ramadan uh, of Muharram outside of Ramadan although the fasts of the month of Muharram are not obligatory yet one who fasts in these days one who fasts in these days out of his own will is entitled to a great reward by Almighty Allah as the hadith cited above signifies that the fasts as the hadith that I mentioned earlier signifies that the fasts of the month of Muharram are most rewardable ones among the nafil or the vol voluntary fasts and the hadith does not mention that the award promised the, the, the reward promised for fast of Muharram and the hadith does not mean that the reward promised for the fast of Muharram can be achieved only by fasting for the whole month each of the fast my brothers and sisters each of the fast of this month of Muharram that we are in that we are actually observing and today is the 8th of Muharram It's the 8th of Muharram therefore one should avail of this opportunity as much as he can so one of the days of Muharram in which we could fast and which is which is a very important it's a very uh, significant Sunnah is the day of Ashura so what is Ashura it is a very famous famous word and famous day Ashura Although Muharram is a sanctified month and as a whole, yet the 10th of Muharram, 10 in Arabic is Ashra. Ashra means 10 in Arabic. So uh, the, the word Ashura, if you can you know, guess by now, it comes from the word 10, from Ashra. The 10th day of Muharram is the most sacred among all the days of Muharram. As the day is mentioned, uh, Ashura by Prophet Muhammad sallam, according to the companion uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu he mentions that when Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam, when he migrated from Mecca to Medina he found that the Jews of Medina used to fast on the day of Muhar uh, on the day of on the 10th day of Muharram so the Jews were already observing this fast so he inquired the, uh, from them that why are these Jews why are you guys fasting why are you fasting on specif uh, spe specifically on the 10th day of Muharram and he was told that uh, Musa alayhi salam Musa or Moses uh, may Allah's uh, peace and blessings be upon him uh, he and his followers crossed the Red Sea miraculously on this day and on this same particular day Pharaoh was drowned in in the waters of uh, the Red Sea so on hearing this and, and in order to commemorate this the Jews used to fast the 10th of uh, Muharram you see this is this is how Muslims from the past even in the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam or, or Musa alayhi salam used to commemorate or celebrate an occasion they would not commemorate and celebrate an occasion by, by ha having huge feasts or you you know having an anniversary this was the practice of the pagans having and making anniversaries uh, celebrating anniversaries uh, and and having huge feasts and celebrations was actually the um, uh, the practice of pagans in order to commemorate a day a day of the birth of a particular individual or a day of the death or the day uh, of some kind of a victory or some kind of an achievement this is the practice age-old practice of mushrikeen of pagans so the Muslims of the time of Moses and the Ahlul Kitab even till later on till they were waiting for the 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 prophet the messenger and prophet that was mentioned in their book that was Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as he is mentioned even by his name however that's a different topic they were commemorating by fasting on the day of uh, the 10th of Muharram the victory of Moses meaning the escaping uh, from the from Pharaoh and Pharaoh drown, drowning in in the Red Sea so Prophet Muhammad says when he heard this he said 
we are more closely related meaning we muslims we and i'm i i am more closely related to musa and my uh, followers they are more closely in relation because of, of of the sunnah that they follow because of the the word of the the practices the pure monotheistic beliefs that we have we are more closer closely related to musa moses alayhi salam than you jews and uh, and this is how he himself started to fast and uh, inform and directed the muslims to fast on that day on the day of ashura and that became the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu it is also reported in a number of authentic traditions that in the beginning the fasting on the day of ashura now listen to this my brothers and sisters this is an probably a new information for you something that you've heard for the first time it is also mentioned in uh, several narrations that in the beginning of which i will mention to you one in the beginning of the fasting on the day of ashura in the time of uh, prophet muhammad and when he ordered the muslims to start fasting on this day this day of 10th of ashura the fasting on this day was made obligatory on muslims it was fard on the muslims to fast on the day of uh, 10th of muharram the ashura and it was later that the fasts of Ramadan were made obligatory and the fasts of the day of Ashura were made optional or voluntary. Uh, as uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentions in one of uh, her, her narrations that when the Prophet وسلم, came to Medina, he fasted on the day of Ashura and directed the people to fast. But when the fasts of Ramadan were made obligatory, the obligation of fasting uh, was confined only to Ramadan and the the month the whole month of Ramadan and the obligatory nature of the fast of Ashura was was abrogated it was abandoned it was uh, uh, not uh, obligatory anymore after the Ramadan was made obligatory uh, fasting in Ramadan rather whoever so desires she went on to say uh, in this narration of a uh, statement of Aisha is mentioned in Sunan Abu Daud she says whoever so desires should fast on it on this day, on the de on the tenth of Muharram, and any other who so likes can avoid fasting on it. If you're not able to fast, if you uh, uh, not feeling well, or you you're traveling, or you're doing, and you you just don't feel like fasting, or you have some other program, or you know something more important to do that you could actually replace because of which you cannot fast, then you are you, you won't be punished. You'll not be accountable for not fasting on this day. However, the Prophet ﷺ used to fast in the day of Ashura even after the fasting in Ramadan was made obligatory. So you should see how virtuous it was and how important the Sunnah this is. Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu, he reports that the Prophet ﷺ preferred the fast of Ashura over fasts of other days and he preferred that the fast of uh, Ramadan over the fast of Ashura. So this and this narration is in Bukhari and Muslim. So in short, my brothers and sisters, it is established through a number of authentic hadith that fasting on the day of Ashura is a sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And it makes and makes one entitled to a very great reward by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And according to another hadith, it is more advisable uh, uh, that the fast of Ashura should either be preceded or followed by another fast. It means that one should fast two days, uh, the 9th or 10th or the 10th or 11th. The reason of this additional fast, as mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ, is that the Jews used to fast on the day of Ashura only, you know, they singled out the day of Ashura and the Prophet ﷺ wanted to distinguish uh, the Muslims uh, way of fasting from that of the Jews. As we know from all the actions uh, from the Ahl al-Kitab, the Prophet ﷺ, he saw there is a resemblance and it was resembling the acts, worship or acts of any other acts from the Jews. He uh, refrained from doing so or he changed the way of doing it and he also uh, admonished the Muslims to uh, uh, not emulate and not imitate the kuffar and mushrikeen and the ahlul kitab he also mentioned in one hadith that whoever emulates another people he is not amongst us he's not from us the one who actually is not amongst the muslims the group of muslims who actually emulates and imitates uh, other people other mushrikeen or other groups uh, the the uh, 
Ahl al-Kitab, uh, the Jews and the Christians. Uh, so the, the, the essence of the meaning of this hadith is that whoever imitates or copies them in whatever actions, he is not amongst the Muslims. And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to be patient and to be firm upon the deen. And the final uh, message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left us with for, uh, from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so along with the, the virtues that we've just mentioned, I would like to uh, point out and mention quickly some of the misconceptions and baseless traditions that are connected with the month of Muharram and Ashura as well. Uh, there are some legends and misconceptions with regard to uh, Ashura that, uh, that have managed to find its way into the minds of uh, the Muslims and into the practice of some ignorant people and ignorant groups and Muslims. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he uh, guides us and whoever is listening and if you have uh, you've not known from the Quran and Sunnah inshallah Allah, may Allah give us the opportunity for this change to take place in order to establish the Quran and, and, and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa uh, some of the very common uh, misconceptions and practices that I mentioned over here that some people think one of them is that this is the day when Adam or Adam alayhi salam was born or was created. This day Adam was created as born. People like to, you know, uh, celebrate birthdays and have anniversaries. So uh, they, they just want to find an excuse to get a holiday or, you know, celebrate make some kind of a celebration, invite people, have a social gathering. So uh, they think that, you know, subhanAllah, and this is a very, very false uh, uh, belief and practice. Uh, if anybody does it for that reason, then it's very, very wrong and you're not gaining any benefit from it. Uh, and the other uh, misconceptions uh, about this day of Ashura is that people think that Ibrahim salam was born on this day, another birth, you know, birthday occasion. Again, if you see all the roots of these anniversaries and birthdays, they will come from pagan traditions and pagan pagan practices, which is another topic altogether. Inshallah, I pray to Allah that He gives us the opportunity to discuss this. Inshallah, in in the future. And another um, misconception is that this is the day when the Qiyamah, Yom Al Qiyamah, the Doomsday. The day, the day of judgment will take place. Whoever, uh, uh, and this is really funny, this is another um, you know, misconception, that whoever will take a bath on the day of Ashura. Whoever takes a bath on the day of Ashura. So I won't be surprised that there are people who are only taking bath only on the day of Ashura. Whoever will take a bath on the day of Ashura will never get sick. So you don't need to take a bath, no matter how filthy you are the rest of the year, and then you get some diseases because of the filth, but you need to take a bath at least during the day of Ashura. So this is a completely nonsensical and baseless statement. Whoever takes a bath on the day of Ashura will never get ill. It's not from Islam, and it's got nothing to do. All these and other similar whims and fancies and totally bases, baseless uh, uh, misconceptions uh, they are traditions, baseless traditions referred to in this respect are not worthy of any credit and they're not even worthy of discussing or talking about in, in, in uh, detail. Some people take it as a sunnah to prepare a particular uh, type of meal on the day of Ashura and this practice too has no basis in the authentic Islamic sources and we shouldn't be doing it because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu didn't do it and the Sahaba didn't do it uh, and Allah Azza wa Jal has has uh, uh, guided us uh, uh, in the Quran to follow uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his companions. Yes, my brothers and sisters, in the Quran it is also mentioned uh, the, the the mention of uh, the Sahaba, the companions, the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu is also there. So we should be following them. The other misconception that we uh, some other people attribute uh, Ashura to is the martyrdom of uh, um, you know uh, Hussein radiallahu anhu, the grandson of uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, by the Syrian army when the battle had taken place in Karbala, and we we've heard these many different uh, versions of the stories, and uh, most of them. Uh, being false and, and overly exaggerated. So we shouldn't be uh, going into this too much, but no doubt the martyrdom of Sayyid, uh, Sayyidina uh, uh, Hussein radiallahu anhu was very, uh, a very tragic and sad incident in the history of Islam. Yet the sanctity of Ashura 
and, and the sacredness, you know, of Ashura cannot be ascribed, cannot be ascribed to this event for a very simple and logical reason. For a very simple and logical re reason. Think about it. Hussein radiallahu anhu, he was the grandson of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he was once praying Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Hussein, Hassan and Hussein were such small babies that they were crawling on top of his back and you know playing around him and once he was in sajda and he was in in the sujood in the sajda for a very long time because one of the one of his grandsons was playing horse you know on on top of uh, 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 prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on his blessed back so um, we know that uh, from 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 uh, the, the timeline from, from the history that Hussein radiallahu anhu was not even born. He was not even born when the uh, sanctity or the, the, the importance of the day of Ashura or the fasting of the Ashura was commemorated, was actually in, in the first first instant, instance it was obligated to by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to the followers and then later on it, it was a uh, 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 Sunnah Rawatib, you know, it, he was regularly doing it. Uh, so the, this this incident would have which happened uh, many many years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had already, uh, you know, uh, uh, asked people and uh, uh, started observing fasting in in Ashura. It, it cannot be related and it cannot be attributed to the to the martyrdom or the death of uh, Hussein radiallahu anhu. May Allah have mercy on him. And on the contrary, it is actually one of the merits of Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu anhu. It is one of the merits of Hussein radiallahu anhu that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, blessed him to, to uh, and his shahada to, to take place on this blessed day, on the day of Ashura. So this is one of his virtues, one of his, uh, one of his uh, merits that uh, uh, he passed away on this day. Uh, another misconception about the month of Muharram is that it is an evil or unlucky month for uh, 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 Hussein radiallahu anhu because he was killed in this uh, month and this day. Uh, and it is for this misconception that people uh, avoid holding marriages and ceremonies or, or any kind of, you know, they, 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 they uh, like to mourn this period because of the death of Hussein radiallahu anhu in some cases. In, in during the whole month of Muharram. And this is again baseless uh, concept which is contrary to the uh, uh, teachings and expressed teachings of Quran and the Sunnah. And if the death of an eminent person in a particular day renders that the day is unlucky for all times to come, one can hardly find that uh, a day free, uh, one day in a year, you know, you, you will be mourning all, all year long for someone's death or some, some person who pr probably died, some Sahabi or some important personality who has died in the past 1400 years. May Allah protect us from this bid'at and uh, we should stay away from it. Rather, we should, we should follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the Sahaba. The other point that it comes after we mention the mourning, uh, that the topic of mourning in and of itself, my brothers and sisters. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has very uh, specifically mentioned uh, about uh, this practice of mourning that used to take place uh, uh, in the, in the jahili, Jahiliya, in the days of ignorance, uh, which was uh, lamenting and, uh, lamenting and uh, uh, holding mourning ce uh, ceremonies in the memory of the person who died or martyr. There are people in the time, uh, uh, you know, of uh, the Jahiliya, in the times of Jahiliya, in the pa the, from the pagan practices. Again, the pagan, the mushrik practices that they would invite certain people. They would invite certain people just to uh, mourn. Like some women would be hired, some women would be hired and been given money just to come and cry and beat their chest and uh, their their cheeks and tear their clothes and these kind of you know jahil uh, uh, practices and this is the people of jahiliya they used to mourn in also in these kind of uh, uh, ways when anyone any f member of their family passed away the prophet ﷺ stopped the muslims from doing all this and directed them to observe patience and even allah azawajal mentions in the quran alladhina idha uh, the ones who are afflicted by any musibah, 
and the ones who have, are afflicted by any kind of calamity or any kind of or any kind of discharge, they should not be lamenting and mourning and beating themselves or making uh, uh, you know abusing or you you know uh, uh, using uh, you know uh, using different methodologies of 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 uh, of uh, mourning, but rather they they should have patience. And and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also uh, directed the Muslims to have patience and say, "Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun." Verily, we belong to Allah subhanahu wa taala. We belong to our Creator, the one who created us, the one who sustains us, the one in whose hands our life is, the one who's, who can take away our soul whenever he wants, when he has appointed the time, whenever he wants, he will take it. And he is Allah, he is, he is the creator, he is the Khaliq, and he is the Malik. So he, whenever he wants, he will take it. And whenever such a thing happens from amongst our closed beloved ones, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for, for Allah to bless all and have mercy on all the souls of all those Muslims who have passed away uh, uh, and all those of your beloved ones insha'Allah and we should just say verily we belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raju and we and verily we will definitely return to him uh, all the authentic jurists and uh, you know the fuqaha uh, are unanimous on the point that the mourning of this type you know uh, of of uh, like how the people in the jahiliyyah would do uh, are forbidden as uh, we know from the hadith specific hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that he is not prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned he is not from our group who slaps his cheeks and tears his clothes and cries in the manner of the people of jahiliyyah so you he's saying that you are not from amongst the muslims when you're doing this when you're doing this, you look like a jahil, you're acting like a jahil. You're acting like those pagans, like those people who are actually even acting in most of the cases. They would just be acting just to gain and just to earn some money. They would come and they cry and beat and shout and you know scream and, and uh, tear their clothes and stuff. So Prophet Muhammad ﷺ forbade the Muslims to do this. As a matter of fact, my brothers and sisters, when the topic of Hussein radiallahu anhu comes even uh, during this month, uh, at this time before he passed away, Hussein radiallahu anhu, we know we, we have a narration from him which is mentioned in Al Kamil from Ibn Kathir uh, that uh, Hussein radiallahu anhu at the time of his death or just before he passed away, he gave a particular advice to his sister, his sister Zainab, who was a very close family member. So he knew that she would be disheartened if anything happens to him, and her heart, she would be heartbroken. She would be she would be devastated. So he went on to give an advice just before he passed away, and he and he told Zainab, "Listen to the advice of Hussein radiallahu anhu." He said, "My dear sister, my dear sister, I swear that in, uh, to you, I swear to you that in case I die, you shall not tear your clothes." nor scratch your face, nor curse anyone for me, or pray for your death. This is the advice given from uh, by Hussein radiallahu anhu to his own sister, to not make any uh, uh, mourning sessions and you know, like how the Jahiliyyah, the people of the uh, of the ignorance, uh, the period of Jahiliyyah would do. And it is evident from this uh, hadith, this statement of Sayyidin, Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu anhu, that this type of mourning is condemned even by the blessed person for the memory of whom these mourning ceremonies are held and every Muslim should avoid this practice and abide by the teachings of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his grandchild he should he should keep this statement at least of Hussein radiallahu and the, all the ayahs of the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and abide by it rather by doing things that will give you absolutely no benefit by having making ceremonies and doing making bid'ah that will give you no benefit at all with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal to bless us during this month, give us the ability to fast tomorrow, which is the 9th of Muharram, and the day after tomorrow, or at least 10th of Muharram, if not 9th or 10th or 10th of 11th, so that we may be able to gain the rewards, the, the great rewards attached with this uh, day of fasting. 
I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides all the Muslim brothers and sisters to the right path, the path of Muhammad sallallahu and his righteous followers. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullahi li wa lakum, subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika, wa shadu la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa natubu alayk, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.